Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another AP CSA lesson where I, Goldie, take you through Unit 2 using objects. And today's lesson is Lesson 4, where we are going to be calling non-void methods. Okay. Um, so non-void methods, um, these are going to be non-static, so meaning they're working on objects, non-void methods, um, and they might be with or without parameters. So we've seen both methods with parameters and without parameters now. Um, so we're just going to be using using both. Okay. So let's talk about return types. So we've only gone over void methods so far, which are methods that do not return any information after they have run. So an example we just did was public void print area. So this accepted a parameter x and it just printed off x times x. It did not actually return any information, which is why it was a void and it had that keyword void. So that keyword void in their return signature means that when you have a method call, like print area 5, um, that's just the statement. Okay, it run, Print area 5 runs, pass it the value of 5, prints off 5 times 5, and then it's done. Okay, That's a void method and how that works. Non-void methods are going to return a value that is the same type as whatever the return type is in the signature. So not only will you have a return type, but you also are going to have a return statement. Okay? So here's the print area method modified a little bit for that. So we have public int print area x. Okay? So now we have int as our return type. Now how does this change our method body? Well, if I have an int value equals x times x, x times x, whatever I end up passing it, gets stored in value, which is an integer. And then as the very last line in my method body, I'm going to return value. Okay. Now value is a variable. It's going to contain some value, um, and it's an integer. So I'm returning an integer value. Okay. Now to use that return value, when you call a non-void method, it must be stored in a variable or used as part of an expression. Okay, so we'll see both examples here. You'll see us calling a non-void method and then taking what's returned and storing it in a var variable. So I still call the method as print area 5. So print area, x gets the value of 5. So when I do x times x, I get 25. 25 gets stored into value, it's an integer, and then I'm going to return 25. Now that return means that I return it back to the original calling method. So this was my calling method, so this returns the value of 25. And then I have to have code that captures that return statement. If I didn't, I would have an error. Okay? If I just had something like this, and I tried to return something from print area, you would get an error. Okay? I need to have something that in this case captures it. So 25 is going to be captured in the variable result. Okay. So that is an example of a non-void method and then how we call that non-void method. Here's another example. Okay. We're going to trace through the following program and the method call to determine what is printed to the screen. Okay. So we're just, again, just kind of um, assume that this code segment in the um, method is in the same class and we're just going to call it an object creating class so there's no static keyword here. So string name equals Johnny. Okay. So name is going to have the value Johnny. There we go, perfect. String new value equals call it name. So here we have a method call. Okay. Call it name. Meaning that I'm going to go down to the method call it and I'm going to pass it the word name. Okay. Right now name is Johnny. So Johnny is going to get passed this method. So that means the variable example is go going to be Johnny. It's going to have the value Johnny. Okay. So both name and Johnny both name and example are Johnny. <laughs> so then I have a return statement. Okay, And my return statement is an expression. Okay, It's a single return statement. It says example plus and then in parentheses is very funny. Okay, So that plus 
because it's between two strings, remember that's concatenation. So it's going to return, Johnny is very funny. Okay, So it's going to return, Johnny is very funny. That's what this method will do. Now, if it returns that, it needs something to capture it. And that's why we have string new value. Johnny is very funny is a sentence that's going to get stored in new value. Okay. So when you go to print new value, okay, you're going to print Johnny is very funny. Okay. So that's kind of an example of a non-void method. So we returned a string. Notice that the return type in the call it is also a string. Okay. So those have to match those values. Um, and then I had a string variable ready to capture the string that was returned. Okay. okay. So that's an example of a non-void method um, being called on, and then we had um, a variable used to capture that. We can also use a non-void method, and the value it returns we can use as part of an expression. So that's going to be our next couple of segments of code here. So these two methods appear in the same class. You'll see it's called public int fun1. It accepts two integers, and it returns the sum of those two integers. So adding two integers is also an integer. And then int fun2, it accepts two ints and it subtracts them. Now notice it takes j minus i. So it takes the second parameter and subtracts the first parameter there. Okay, And that result is an integer that it's going to return. Okay. So those are the two non-void methods that we are working with. They're just going to return simple statements here. So off to the right, I have five examples. It says if these are located in method in the same class, what will the values of x be after the lines of code are executed? Okay. So you can see here in like number one, I have a method called a fun2, and I have a method called a fun1. I'm going to add those together because those both return integers, and the sum of that is what's going to be stored in x there. Okay. So let's start off with fun2. Okay, fun2 returns j minus i. Now since it passed 4 comma 5, j is 5 and i is 4. Okay, which the result of that is, is a 1, right? This is a 1. So same thing with fun1. Fun1 is up here. I pass it a 1 and a 3 and I just add 1 plus 3, which is 4. And then, after those two method calls happen, I add the 1 plus the 4, and x is going to have the value of 5. Okay. So another example. Fun1 takes a 4 plus 5. Fun2 takes a 3 minus 1. So this is a 9 and a 2. And we add them together, and we get 11. If you wanted to pause the video and try the next three on your own, feel free to, and then you can just press play when you're ready to check your answers. But this next one, fun one, adds the two together. Fun two takes the second and subtracts the first. So this is nine, and this is a negative two. Nine plus a negative two is gonna give you seven. Three, fun one, adds them together. Fun two takes the second minus the first one. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And then fun 2, you'll get a negative 2, 4 plus 5. So this is also going to be a 7. Okay. Non-void method calls will return a value. So some things to remember before we wrap up the lesson here. What is in the return statement must match what is indicated to be returned. So if you say int in your method header that you're going to return an int, you have to return an int. If you try to return a string but in your method header you say int, you're going to get a compiler error. Okay. The return statement must always be the last line of code. Okay? The very last line of code. You cannot have any code after the return statement. 
Okay. Um, you'll see examples where it looks like there's things after the return statement. When we get into the code, we're going to learn for if statements and loops and all of that. Um, so I'll explain a little bit more when we get to that. But the return statement has to be the last line of code executed. The value you return must fit the value of the variable capturing it. Okay. So if you're returning an int, okay, you return an int, your method signature says you return an int. If you're capturing that return value, that value must also fit. Okay. Um, now if you return an integer, you can have a double variable catch it, right? Because an integer fits into a double variable. Um, also another little small thing, if you do have a void method, you can technically return void or just do a return as, um, as its own statement to end the method. These are um, these would be optional and usually aren't included in code. Um, there are a couple reasons why you might, but we'll learn about those later. Okay. But void methods technically can have a return statement. They just return void or they just return and then um, have the semicolon after it. Okay, that wraps up this computer science lesson where we are calling non-void methods. So we saw a couple examples there. Thank you guys so much for following along and I will see you next time.